Today on the show, we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite So Bad It's Good movies, Deadly Prey, and then we've also scored an interview with Ted Pryor, the star of the movie. You may know him as Danton! So something you may not know about me is that I love good, bad movies. I'm a really big fan of them, and I've been watching them pretty much my whole life. Uh, it all started with Mystery Science Theater 3000 and just grew from there. What are you talking about good, bad movies? What's that? Well, Robot, uh, a So Bad It's Good movie is a movie that was uh, poorly made because the filmmakers did not understand and or have the means to make a good movie. Uh, I don't understand. Why would anyone want to watch a movie that they know is bad? Why? <laughs> Why? Because there, there is a certain je ne sais quoi, this, this quality about these movies that just makes them special despite the fact that they're so terribly made and they have no budgets usually. And uh, it's just, it's something where you know these people were like seriously trying to make something and they just fail spectacularly and it's just beautiful to watch. Uh, and then there's, you know, there's the whole other side of it where there are some movies where people are trying to make a bad movie and they know they're making a bad movie. Is it over yet? And that's just not as fun. It's not as satisfying as watching someone who's trying to make a good one and makes a bad one. Eh, whatever. I only watch sophisticated classics like Commando. That's the only movie you watch. That's the only movie I can remember I've seen. Okay, well, you don't have a lot of RAM, so that's understandable. But Commando is awesome, by the way. Well, Robot, some people, humans, uh, who have seen more than one movie uh, and can remember seeing more than one movie and claim to love movies, like myself, uh, love both good movies and so bad it's good movies. Uh, you kind of have to take the good with the bad, all right? And uh, movie making is a really special process and sometimes there are accidents that happen that are caught on film and uh, forever, you know, will be in our consciousness and I love it. I love it. Hmm. Hmm. And I'm not the only one here, okay? There is a community of people who love So Good It's Bad Movies. And uh, thanks to the rise of the internet, it has become far easier to proliferate these bad movies when you find them, these hidden gems, if you will. So, Robot, since you are a noobler at the concept of watching So Bad It's Good movies, um, but if you're interested in maybe dipping your little robot toesies in that pool, uh, I'm gonna give you a short list, a very short list of some of the top So Bad It's Good movies uh, that you can watch and get educated on. You know, some people believe I don't have toes. <laughs> it's not true, I do. Um, yes, Robot does have toes. They're not normal toes, though. They're not, re I mean, they're technically toes, but, you know. So here's a list of five movies to get you started with your new obsession. Uh, one of them being Troll 2. I believe it's on Netflix, and it's really bad. <laughs> Let me give you some advice, you dwarfs. Get out of here, or you're going to be in a lot of trouble. And remember... <laughs> Number two, Tommy Wusso's The Room. That one is a real stinker. <laughs> I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hey, Johnny. What's up? I have a problem with Lisa. She said that I hit her. <laughs> what? Well, did you? No, it's not true. Don't even ask. What's new with you? Well, I'm just sitting up here thinking. There's also the infamous Birdemic, uh, which is definitely filled with really great visual effects that you should check out. I even saw Birdemic in a theater. That's an accomplishment. I put that on my gravestone. I saw Birdemic in a theater. Shit, here they come! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 
I've mentioned this one before, but I'll mention it again. Basket Case is really good. You should definitely check that one out. It's one of my top faves, personally. <laughs> I think that you should definitely watch Deadly Prey. It is amazing and it has risen to popularity recently uh, within the community and rightly so because it deserves it. So what is Deadly Prey about? Well, Robot, it is about, uh, there's this group of mercenaries, this outfit of mercenaries who are being trained in these war games. And what they do is they snatch people off the street and then set them loose and then uh, try to hunt them down for training purposes. Uh, until one day when they catch the wrong man, Mike Danton, who was the best in Vietnam and still is. That sounds pretty badass, actually. It is really bad. I'm telling you, Robert, you're really going to like this movie. Um, and uh, obviously that does not turn out well for the mercenary group, and it is delightful. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> so recently it has been rediscovered, unearthed from the depths, this, this diamond of a terrible movie, uh, and it's just... It, it, I understand why it came back. You know what I'm saying? It's just too good to be lost forever. And uh, as I was saying earlier, it has been highly proliferated among bad movie groups of people who love this sort of shit. And that's consequently how I found out about it. And man, it just blew my mind. I was like, how did I not know about this movie? And it's just such a treat. And I'm so glad that it was, was found and, uh, and dug up. It, it really deserves it. So the stars aligned and fate would have it that I got in touch with uh, David and Ted Pryor, the brothers who made, wrote, and directed uh, Deadly Prey. And I was able to score an interview with Ted Pryor who plays Mike Danton in the movie. No way. Way. Danton himself? Danton himself. You interviewed Mike Danton. Let's start this whole thing off uh, by telling you my experience with Deadly Prey and how I found Deadly Prey. I know a lot of people who are into good bad movies. I'm one of them. I grew up on Mystery Science Theater 3000. I love that. I, you know, I just I have a love for amazing bad movies. And my friend Pete Kelly, who is like the master of that, he has all these weird gems. He was he brought it to my attention. He's like, hey, you should watch this. And he gave me a copy of it, and I watched it, and I was like. This is amazing. This is like one of the best worst films I've ever seen. I know. <clears throat> now, one question I have about Dudley Prey is, uh, did you really eat that worm? Absolutely. <laughs> I thought yeah. so. Oh, yeah. Here's what happened. They had a fake worm. Mm -hmm. And it just looked so dumb. And I said, man, just get me some worms. Let's get this thing done. And so one of the, somebody, I don't remember if it was me or who it was, but somebody just dug right there in the dirt and there were a bunch of worms. And yeah, for sure. What I, what I love about that particular scene is how you, you can see how aware I am of where the camera is and how much I'm trying to show the worm. So a lot of my favorite scenes in the movie are uh, definitely when Danton is just going around and just killing all these mercenaries in all these impossible ways. Uh, it's, it's so much fun. Tell us a little bit more about some of your experiences shooting some of these ridiculous scenes. Well, one that really sticks out in my mind is, is I'm up in a tree limb and I'm laying there. Mm -hmm. and, and it was really hard to keep my balance because it was a small tree limb too. You know, it wasn't <laughs> like some big tree limb. And, and the guys are walking underneath me. And the shot is they walk under it. And you don't see me in the shot when yeah. they're walking. And then the camera pans up and there I am up in the tree watching them. And I realize I'm only about 18 inches over their heads. Especially <laughs> there's a taller guy almost had to duck under the tree. Limb. 
So I say to my brother, I say, I say man, Dave, aren't they going to be able to just see me here? And he goes, oh, it doesn't work that way. You don't know how camera works, which yeah. is how he still talks to me, by the way. Yeah. And, and he goes, he goes, if, if it's not in the shot, it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And I go, what the hell's that mean? He goes, well, we're on them, then we pan up to you. It's like two different shots. And I said, are you sure? And he <laughs> says, yeah, totally. Meanwhile, you know, I'm hanging under this tree for dear life. And, um, and of course, when I saw the movie, I was just like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> I mean, what kind, of, what kind of mercenaries are these guys? I know, they, they are the world's worst mercenaries. It was, it was unbelievable. There's a shot, the first opening shot of me that goes from my feet up and it reveals the physique thing and all yeah. that, right? Yeah. It comes up to my face and I do this really kind of long blink. It's so, like, not a good blink. It's like, hey, everybody, look at me. And it's the opening shot of how badass I am. I was like, David, what happened was we also shot that at the same place where the tanks were, and it was the same day. It was 1,000 degrees. And he had a shiny board, and they were just pumping it into my eyes. Yeah. I didn't know back then that I could say, guys, can you figure out another way to do this? I can't even see Fritz. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even see him, you know? Mm -hmm. But I didn't know I could say that. I just thought, well, this is what you got to... Because my brother was like, hey, man, you, you know, he's smoking all the time. And he says, you got to just stare into that fucking thing. I don't know what to tell you. We got to get the shot. We got to get out of here. Our time's up. It's it's burning my eyes out. The camera's panning up. And it just so happens I get this real long blink on my big macho moment. Yeah. And it drives me nuts every time I see it. It drives me crazy. Because it's so disconnect, too. Yeah. There's nothing about it that's threatening. Yeah. There's nothing about it. You know, it drives me nuts. Now you're gonna die, tough boy. So I know this film was your second film, not necessarily your first, but you guys are still very much figuring out what you're doing. And the movie just has so much charm about it. Like it just has this magical quality of these guys who don't know what they're doing, but it, they're just doing it anyways. And, and uh, it really translates to the screen. Well, how did you guys feel about Deadly Prey when you were finished wrapping it? Were you, were you like proud of it? Were you like, okay, on to the next one? No, I think no. We were all stoked. I remember going to the, to the American film market and screening it for buyers and stuff, and we just thought it was the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. You know, there wasn't, in our minds, there wasn't a, a laugh in the thing, you know? <laughs> and now, of course, when I go to these different screenings, I, I hear the screaming and the yelling and the, and the cackling. Where is he? I ain't saying Your turn. How far? About 10 minutes ago. So, how did this movie come about? I know you and your brother, your brother uh, David Pryor, is the director of the film. Right, and wrote it. A and he also wrote yeah. it. So, yeah, walk us through kind of how it came to be. Well, we had no money, so we had to make a movie with no money, so we had to make, we decided to shoot in the woods. We had to write a script to be shot in the woods. And we had woods, so that was cool. We went to see a film called First Blood. I think it was First Blood. My brother says no, my brother says no, I just came up with this thing, but I think I, I kind of remember it differently. We went to see First Blood and I woke up going like this, hey, I could do that, you know, so, so we just thought that was the coolest thing ever. And, and that's sort of what spawned it, because it was sort of the same kind of thing, which is a guy doing his thing. And then we came up with every crazy, conceivable uh, booby trap we could. And that's, that's it. It's not a, it's, David wrote it in about two days, like everything he writes. It's never more than two or three days. Yeah. He shuts himself in a room. He comes out and says to me, you know, gives, Ted, I got this going on. What do you think? This, that, the other thing. You know, should we cut off an arm? Yeah, that sounds cool. <laughs> And even that scene when I cut off uh, Fritz's arm, I remember it differently. Dave said it was in a script. I don't ever remember it being in a script. I remember specifically me holding it in my hand, and my brother said to me, "Well, what would you do now?" And I said, "I'd beat his ass with it." And that's and then I just that's what we did. We went for it. We are halfway through our interview with Ted Pryor. We have one commercial to watch, and then we're going to continue our interview and talk to Ted about Deadly Prey and the de fuck and Deadliest Prey, the sequel. I like that fucking commercial. We're back. 
Deadly Prey now has had a huge surge in popularity, uh, especially within the in the circles of cult movie people. Right. Uh, it's its own weird thing, and I guess I'm a part of that community in a way. More and more people are discovering Deadly Prey every single day, uh, and it's amazing because it never made it onto DVD. It's just right. somehow found a home on the internet, on YouTube, uh, from VHS, and maybe from Beta. One of my main questions for you is, is why isn't this movie on DVD? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it, it is, but it's, you know, ripped off. I don't, we don't know who owns it. We don't, we've tried to figure that out. We think that David Winters, one of our original partners in that owns it. Mm -hmm. That's where I believe it is. And I don't think David Winters has any real interest in, in that. I don't think he really knows about all this. So yes, I was there at uh, the, awesome. the screening of the Cine Family, uh, and it was one of the best screenings that I've been to. It was so much fun. Uh, how did you feel about it? How was it for you? It was awesome. I, um, here's what happened. I got an email mm -hmm. from a guy named Dimitri who said he belongs to something called the Sinner Family, which I had never heard of. Um, not that I would. It's not something I was doing, yeah. really. You know, said that they were going to screen the movie and would like to know if I'd like to come. And, they, and the place was in West Hollywood and this, that, and the other thing. So I got to thinking about it. And I thought, man, this would really be great to bring my son to. Mm -hmm. And his little buddy who they go, they play Deadly Prey every once in a while instead of fighting out in the backyard with the guns and stuff. We go. And, I, and I'm, I'm pulling down. It's off of Fairfax. Mm -hmm. And I'm pulling down past the theater, and I see a line going down and around the corner, almost, and from the theater. And I, and I immediately assume there's another event going on. I don't, I don't for a <laughs> second think this is for me. I, not for a second. I, f I figured it's going to be like, you know, 11 guys sitting in a room staring at me during the movie. That's what I'm thinking <laughs> is going to happen. But I wanted my son to, to have this experience, you know, and I wanted to be a big shot to my kids. You know, yeah. what, what can I say? Which hasn't worked yet, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> Dads are dads no matter what, man. Yeah. No matter how cool you think you are, you're still like, just a no. dad. Yeah. So I get parked. We come walking around. And you know parking there. It's hard. So I'm yeah. way down. We're five blocks away in a residential area. And we come up. And as we're walking past the line, because I'm looking to get in because I need to find Dimitri, I see people kind of nudging and looking over at me and this, that, and the other thing. And I start getting really nervous. You know, but, so what I did was I immediately put all my attention on the kids. Yeah. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. And I kept myself occupied that way to, to just sort of, because I'm not used to that, you know. We go in. Dimitri rushes me to this back area, which was great. It was a lot of fun. And explains, no, no, they're here for you, man. This is it. This is the deal. So then I'm, you know, every insecurity possible about getting old <laughs> and everything else starts kicking in. And do I have the right shoes on? What am I doing here? What am I going to say? What are they going to ask me? Uh, but Beer took care of that pretty quickly. And, and then, and then uh, we watched the movie and the people just seemed to love it and they were laughing and they were carrying on and they were quoting different lines. And, and of course, there I am with, with my son and his buddy. And it was just, it just blew my mind. And afterwards, it was hours, it seemed like hours of, you know, signing things and talking to people. And I did the Q&A and all this. But one of my most memorable moments was that Dimitri had brought one of the fake arms. Mm -hmm. I think I took it off of him, like I beat him with it or something yeah, on the stage. Yeah, you did. Right, right. You they did. asked me if I would do that, by the way, you know, like by email. <laughs> and I remember thinking, okay, I guess. I mean, you know. But you can only imagine what I thought this might really be, you know, like because it, it had the, it definitely had the, 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 the opportunity to be ridiculously horrible and weird and uncomfortable and all this. But it was great. It was great. It was a total blast. I got home. I called my brother the very next morning and I said, Dave, I said, I got to tell you what just happened last night. Mm -hmm. And he was like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> and that's when we thought, huh, you know, hmm, maybe we should think this thing through a little bit. And how could we do a sequel? And should we? And... And then the other screenings started popping up after that. So I was at the first Deadly Prey That screening? I know of, that wow. I was at. Yeah, the I, first that I was at. I and I hadn't it. seen it since the original 1980s whatever, you know. So, so I was like, it was real fun for me. Yeah. You did. So, Ted, you've mentioned that uh, you guys have made Deadliest Prey. For those of you who out there who don't know about it, it is the sequel to Deadly Prey. I'm really excited about it. I can't wait to watch it. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the premise of the film? Yeah, the premise of the film was just based on the way it ended last. You know, the, the original Deadly Prey, 
uh, I'm standing there with a machete and I tell the bad guy, Dave Campbell, uh, Hogan, to run into the woods. Mm -hmm. And then I do this scream and the movie ends. No. No, you can't do this. Run! No! So we decided, well, what happened to him? Like, did I kill him? Or what, what really went down? So, so we figured we would start the movie off. The, the basic storyline is he's getting out of jail now 27 years later for, for all that he did. And he decides to come after me and do it again. Like, he's been obsessing on this whole thing, <laughs> yeah. right? And so he gets out of jail, and he's already got a network kind of set up. And we tried to work in the Internet a little bit. Like, there's cameras in the trees, and people in bars are watching this. He's, he's, he's sort of pirated and piped into, like, everyone's Internet. I don't know how that works. <laughs> yeah. Everything ready? Ready to go online, sir. Let the show begin. Wait, wait, wait. I think I might have found something. Yeah? And uh, and so now we have that kind of working, and he, he just kind of re-kidnaps me and, and starts the whole thing over. Awesome. And and it's, it's a lot different than the original, but it's a lot the same yeah. in, in many levels. You know, um, but it really is Dave Campbell's story or Hogan's story of, of him trying to get back at me mm -hmm. because he wants now he wants to prove to the whole world who's really the best kind of thing. You know, yeah. <laughs> you're the great and powerful Mike Danton. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me, right? Right? <laughs> you sure don't look like much to me. Looks can be deceiving. Yeah. It's gonna be the easiest money I've ever made. You think so? No. I know so. You're not so smart, are you, pal? What? What? It's simple. You're dead. How does one get a copy of Deadliest Prey? Well, you can pre-order now, mm -hmm. which is deadliestprey.com. It's the website. Have you been to the website? I have not been to the it's a cool, It's a cool website. Check it out. <laughs> it's retro as could be. But you go to the website, you can pre-order now, and it comes out. It's, it's going to be shipped out starting on November 1st. Mm -hmm. I've been waiting a long time for this. What other projects do you have going on? Is there anything else that you'd like to talk about or any other upcoming I things? I have I have a script that's completely different than this called God Anonymous. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to get that funded and I really like to direct it. Mm -hmm. I don't really want to be in it. I, I'd, I'd much rather focus on getting the right people in it. I don't think I'm right for this. Yeah. Um, but other than that, not really. I'm just raising my family, taking care of my kids and doing yeah. all that. Well, that is also very awesome and important. Uh, well, I love it. Yeah, I'm <laughs> so, a real family guy. So Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you so much for coming today, Ted. Totally. It's been a blast. This has been a feather in my cap. I, I'm just so excited to have you. And Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm so glad to talk about this film. And like I said, I've just had so many questions about this movie, you know, and yeah. it's so great to finally get answers from yeah. the source. You yeah, know? It's, it I love was a it. trip. And uh, everyone out there, if you haven't seen Deadly Prey, check it out. And also be sure to do a pre order for Deadliest Prey out November 1st on deadliestprey.com. You should also like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and thanks for watching. Goodbye. BT Dubs, I happened to get an advanced copy of Deadliest Prey. I was worried at first that they wouldn't be able to recapture the magic. I, I had my doubts, but I watched it, and I was completely blown away. They have definitely made the perfect sequel to Deadly Prey. Without spoiling anything, I would have to say some of my favorite parts uh, include the hacker characters. They are delightful. I think you'll get a kick out of them too. It's great to see that they got the gang back together. It was a lot of fun watching their shenanigans, and I hope that they get back together again in another 30 years and make another sequel. Uh, I'm really hoping. I want to see the most deadliest prey in 30 years, or I'm going to be pissed. So I say deadliest prey is getting the CBG-19 stamp of approval. Robot loved it, and you'll like it too. So if you want to buy it, 
feel free to go to our website and we have a little banner there. You can click on it and then you can go pre-order from there.